Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. I'm excited about today's tutorial. It's a sewing tutorial, which I haven't done in a while. This is a quick and easy project and I'm calling this a casserole coaster. Often when you have casseroles to put on the countertop, you need to put a hot pad under it. And usually one is not enough. So I thought, why not just make a very large hot pad? And this could also almost be a placemat. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this very, very simple one. This has no binding on it and it is specifically sized for a casserole dish. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add binding and you can make it a little bit bigger and it could be a placemat, which you know we have lots of projects for the placemats, but you could also make the casserole coaster with binding. Today's video, like I said, we're gonna focus on this version, which is a no binding, very easy, very sewing beginner friendly project. And I think these are gonna make great holiday gifts. Let's get started. So here's what you're gonna need for this no binding casserole coaster. You're going to need a piece of fabric that's going to be the front of your casserole coaster. This is the side that will be quilted. You're gonna cut that to 14 by 10 and a half. You're gonna need a piece of batting of some sort. Now this is just a high loft thermalam batting. I like this. You can use warm and natural, whatever you wanna use. I'm using this, like I said, this is Thermal Lamb Plus by Pelon. I've cut this to 15 by 12 and a half. You're gonna need another piece of fabric that's going to be the back. It needs to be the same size as the 14 by 10 and a half. It'll probably end up being just slightly smaller, but you can start with that size. You're gonna need a ruler and you're going to need something to mark your fabric with. Also helpful, but not absolutely necessary, is a walking foot. I'm going to be using my Bernina, which has a built-in walking foot, but if you don't have one, this is a good investment when you're dealing with things that are layered fabrics or bulky. This really helps keep your seams and everything nice and smooth. We're also gonna use some 505 adhesive spray. You could also alternatively, or in addition to, you can pen your fabrics together. I'm also going to layer in a piece of Insulbrite, also cut to 15 by 12 and a half ish. Um, I'm just going to layer these two to give it some extra insulation. You don't have to do this necessarily, but I do think it's a nice touch. So the first thing we're gonna do is layer our two battings together. So I'm gonna take my Insulbrite and my Thermal Lamb. I'm gonna use a little bit of the 505 adhesive. I'm gonna spray it. And I'm gonna layer my Insulbrite right on top of it. Doesn't really matter which side is up or which side is down. I'm gonna make sure those are well adhered together. And now I'm going to layer my fabric on top of my Thermal Lamb in the same manner. I'm gonna spray this. I'm actually, I'm gonna center this on here want to make sure that there is extra batting all the way around and then I'm just going to pull one side back spray and then I'm going to flatten that out and I'm going to do the other side All right, once we've got that secured into place, we can put our 505 away. Now you can use a marking pen. Now these are, I just grabbed several different ones. This is an air and water soluble ink on this end. This is a water soluble on this, meaning that you have to wet it to get rid of these lines. Um, this end is air and water soluble, so you can either wet it and get rid of it or you give it a little bit of time and the ink will disappear. So that's one option. These are all Pilot Friction Pens. These all erase with the use of an iron. So you can use these. These are all different. There are different kinds. I found that the Click Pilot Friction Pens seem to dry up faster and the Pilot Markers are not recommended for fabric. And some people say that they've had the lines show up. Once this is laundered, the lines won't show back up. Um, I've never had an issue with them showing up. This is what I'm going to be using. You could also use a chalk liner if you want. Whatever is going to work for you. I'm going to use this just because I think it's going to show up the best for the camera. So now you need to decide how you want to do your quilting on the top. I like to do diagonal lines. You can do straight lines. If you're going to do straight lines, you're just going to line your ruler up with your fabric. 
make sure it's straight line it up with the grid lines on your ruler you can make some grid lines this way I like to do diagonal lines and on your quilting rulers you're going to have a diagonal line what you do is take this diagonal line right here and I'm gonna line that up with the bottom of my fabric like that I'm gonna make sure that I'm going edge to edge So I'm going from one end to the other and I'm going to go ahead and mark that line. So you can see I've made my first line. Now I can use that line and I can decide if I want to go one inch squares or two inch squares. I'm going to line the one inch line up with the line that I just drew. Maybe I'll go two inches just so this will go a little faster. But you can make them as big or as small as you want. So I've lined that two inch line right there. I'm gonna draw my next line. Then I'm gonna use that line again on the two inch line. I'm going to use that line, the two inch line. So once I've got all those lines made, I'm going to twist my ruler and I'm going to go with this 30 degree line. And I'm going to make the same markings in the opposite direction. So I'm lining that line up here. And I'm going to go this way. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the two inch line on top of that one. And I'm going to measure two inches from there. So I'm going to take that line that I just made. I'm going to put my two inch line on it. Here's my two inch line and I'm marking there. All right, once you have all of your grid lines marked, however you want to do it, and again, you could just do straight lines every one inch or whatever you want. If you want them closer together, you can do that as well. You're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to start quilting the top of this. So you can see my grid lines. So here we are at the sewing machine. So I'm just going to pick one of these lines and I like to kind of start towards a middle line. So I'm gonna go this, this long one that goes all the way across. I'm gonna start just slightly off of the fabric. I'm gonna line up my presser foot and I'm going to put my stitch length on about 3.8. And we're just going to stitch. Again, if you have a walking foot, this will help keep the fabric from bunching. So go ahead and stitch on your lines. When you get to the end of your line, stitch a little bit off. All right, and then go to the next line. If you need to adjust your fabric, go ahead. And then we're going to start the next line and you're just going to continue until all of your lines have been stitched. Once you've got all your diagonals sewn, it should look something like this. I'm going to take this over to the iron and get rid of my markings and then we'll head back to the cutting table. All right, so when you're done, it should look something like this. I used the iron, got rid of all of my Pilot Friction Pin marks. Can you see the quilting? Actually, you can see it better from the back side. All right, so now what we need to do is trim this up and get everything nice and straight. So what I'm gonna do is start by straightening one side. So I'm gonna use my ruler. I'm gonna set this up, try to get this straight, and I'm matching the line on my ruler to the line on my mat, making sure I have a straight line to start with. I'm going to trim that off. Now I'm going to turn it. Now I'm going to use 
one of these lines and match it with the straight line of my fabric. So I'm matching the straight line of the fabric with the line on my ruler, making sure that I've got fabric sticking out all the way around. You can scoot it over a little bit. And I'm gonna trim that side. Now I've got two straight edges. So I can line this edge up on my ruler or on my mat. Making sure that's straight. I'm lining this bottom up on my mat, but I'm also using the ruler. Again, making sure I have fabric sticking out on this side so I get a nice straight edge. Lining the straight edge down here with my ruler. One more time. Order. So that's what I want to cut this fabric piece to. All right. So now what you want to do is take your quilted piece and you're going to lay this piece on top. If there is a direction that you want to be top to top, you want to make sure you line those up. Um, this is non-directional because it goes both directions and this is pretty much non-directional so I'm not going to worry about it too much. So we're going to line this up pretty sides together and you're going to pin or clip this into place. All right, once you've got this pinned or clipped all together, you're going to choose a spot that is going to be your opening where we're gonna turn this right side out. So I'm just gonna mark right here. I'm gonna use my fabric marker and I'm just gonna leave about a, it's a lot to turn out. So I'm gonna use about two and a half, three inch opening. And we're not going to sew between those two marks. So you do not sew through there. Now you're going to take it over to the sewing machine, you're going to back stitch, start at one of your marks, stitch all the way around until you get to the second mark, back stitch and stop. Quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, leaving this opening. So once you've done that, it's going to look something like this. I've sewn all the way around, quarter inch seam allowance, left this opening. So now what you want to do is take your scissors and just cut these, snip the corners close to the stitching without cutting through. Just gonna reduce some bulk in the corners. If your seam allowance got a little crazy, go ahead and cut that down. My fabric looks a little bit bigger than needed to be on the back, so let's get rid of any extra bulk. And then you're going to turn this right side out. I like to reach to a far corner and pull that through and then start working it through. Now reach inside with a bone folder or a corner turner, chopstick, whatever you have and really go through and work those seams out. Make sure your corners are poked out. I'm running the bone folder along this seam. So it should look something like that. You want to take it over to the iron and you're going to press it, making sure that this back fabric and the front fabric meet on the side. You don't want to see that top back fabric on the top. And where this opening is, you're going to let it do what it wants to do naturally and that's close itself up. And you want to try to make that as seamless as possible. So go ahead and give it a nice press. All right, so I have given mine a good press. Right here is my opening. You can see right there. 
So I'm gonna put some extra clips there to try to keep that as seamless as possible and remind me when I go to the sewing machine to take my time and make sure that I have that all lined up. Now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine. We're just gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance or an eighth of an inch, whatever you like for your border. You're just gonna stitch a top stitch all the way around. When you come across here, you're gonna close that opening. So here's our finished casserole coaster. It is the perfect size for a casserole dish. Here's our finished casserole coaster. You can see it's the perfect size for a casserole dish. It's going to look nice on the covers. It's going to keep them nice and safe. And I think for giving gifts, these are really cute. To just roll up and tie a cute string or bow, put a tag, whatever you like. Super cute. So I hope you enjoy this gift idea. I think it's a very practical, very useful gift that anyone would be excited to have. I know I use these all the time in my kitchen. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to make them with binding and those can also be used as placemats and you know how many placemat tutorials we have. So like I said, these are really easy. I think they will make fun Christmas gifts and a very, very practical, quick, easy, you can use your scraps, you can use your fat quarters, easy, easy thing to make and great for craft fairs as well. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, never stop making. See ya. Bye-bye.